If we are to move forward, we have to know where we've been. So let's go back to July. A flag draped coffin at the Capitol Rotunda. It is the very first African-American lawmaker to lie in state in this hallowed place. Congressman John Lewis. He kept getting himself arrested. As an old man, he didn't sit out any fight. President Obama reminds us of Lewis's toughness. He was constantly fighting back with peaceful protests. He called it good trouble. Let's go further back to March 7th, 1965, the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. A young John Lewis was an organizer of this peaceful march. There will be no march between Selma, Alabama and Montgomery, and I have so instructed the Department of Public Safety. Lewis was severely beaten. Today, we call it Bloody Sunday. We may no longer have to guess the number of jelly beans in a jar in order to cast a ballot. And that's the reason Lewis was willing to die. Jelly beans in a jar, and in many other ways, minorities have been denied the right to vote. And voter suppression is something that we have an unfortunate, ugly history around. UCLA's Dr. Tyrone Howard reveals a sinister past. So what I think about is things like the literacy tax, that said that, you know, blacks had to show that they could answer certain questions. And some of these questions were just absolutely absurd, such as how many jelly beans are in a jar. Howard adds that the KKK would show up to voting locations to intimidate, poll taxes would hit the impoverished, and the grandfather clause would stifle generations of voters. If your grandfather didn't vote, then you can't vote. Well, guess what? If my grandfather was black and he was denied the right to vote, that means that I would not be given the right to vote. So it's systemic ways that we were excluded. It all began in the 1870s. Newly freed African-Americans showed up to the polls in mass, electing a number of blacks to Congress. And then laws designed to prevent minorities from voting began to creep into Southern states. Their effectiveness was evident in that march from Selma to Montgomery. They went through Lowndes County, which was 81% black, but not a single African-American was registered to vote. Not one. Yet the percentage of the white population registered, 118%. Bloody Sunday led to a new awakening and the passage of the Voting Rights Act. It is wrong, deadly wrong, to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. But in 2013, the Supreme Court struck down parts of the law, claiming our country has changed. But the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg strongly disagreed with the ruling, saying the court erred egregiously. Now there are accusations of a new wave of voter suppression in Southern states, from minority polling places shutting down to mail-in ballot restrictions, to voter ID laws, to intimidation. Are we seeing a new chapter of the same old thing? And when you begin to systematically remove people from that right to vote, and oh, by the way, the majority of those folks who you were removing the right to vote happen to be people of color, if that's not systematic racism, I'm not sure what is. Congressman Lewis always said that progress is fragile and hate can rise again. We still have a long way to go.